that was a very good uh, presentation. Hari, if you have uh, seen his presentation, he said, you know, we need to do something long range issues that we need to tackle. So one of them that we are tackling is the academics in uh, American, Hindu studies in American academia. So I would now like uh, Kalyan to speak a few words about it. Thank you, Gopal. Now, uh, how many of you have seen the movie, The Lion King? Have you seen it? I've seen it about a hundred times because I had a niece who loved the movie and she used to see it over and over and I, I used to see it with her also. <laughs> now, in the movie, Lion King, the little lion, the cub, Simba, goes through two, two tragedies. One is, it loses its father to a very, you know, to a tragic accident schemed by the, his brother. It sounds like our own Mahabharata. But the more important tragedy is that when Simba runs away, it runs away thinking it was at fault for what happened. Right? You remember that? And many years later, there's a monkey that has to come and, a Rafiki, a monkey, which comes and says, remember who you are. <laughs> you know? And Simba wakes up. Now, in many regards, the condition of the Hindus is like Simba. Not only have we been um, damaged in many ways, civilizationally, historically, but most importantly, we think we are at fault for what happened. <laughs> you know, we are at fault for most of our problems. And uh, we need a Rafiki from time to time to come and wake us up. Uh, Dr. Subramanian Swami is one such Rafiki who has, who has woken us up many, many times. <laughs> you know. So I uh, deeply appreciate Dr. Swami's uh, outspoken voice you know, and almost in many cases a very lone voice in the uh, battle, you know, in the Kurukshetra. <laughs> the, the great problem with Hindus sticking their neck out is when they get into trouble, when they turn on, turn back and say, where are my supporters? Supporters will run away. <laughs> you know, so there's a risk. And uh, Dr. Swami is somebody who has taken enormous risks, personal risks in the public sphere. So I think we all owe him a, a debt of gratitude. Let's give him a round of applause. Now, there is another Kurukshetra. It's called the Academic Kurukshetra. Uh, many of you who have been following our good friend Rajiv Malhotra, you would have recognized the challenges here. Um, so this is a Kurukshetra. It's really a, a, a very difficult problem. So let's let's go next, <laughs> next. So in, if you if you were born 200 years ago, you imbibed your Hindu culture from your family. Next. However, whatever education you got through a Gurukulam or an ashram, it reinforced what you learned from your family. You know what you inherited was reinforced. Next. So the intellectual understanding of our dharma reinforced what we imbibe from our families, and that was our culture. Our, what we imbibed was validated. There was an integration between theory and practice 200 years ago. And, that, and then that changed. Next. So what happened was there was a break. Over a period of 150 years, there was a complete break. And what has since occurred is the what we learn in school and colleges tends to invalidate what we learn at home from our parents. We are all products of that invalidation, whether we know it or not, like it or not, to some level we have our culture has been deeply invalidated by the academia and the syllabus, the, the, the educational system in which we were raised. Next. So this is a problem. It creates an identity crisis, like Simba. You know, Simba started thinking it is a, it is not a lion. It is something else. It, it eats worms, and it, you know, it, it has an identity crisis. 
So this is a Hindu, Hindu identity crisis. Same deal. <laughs> now here is a manifestation of this crisis. Okay, this is a picture from a sixth grade textbook in California. Remarkable picture. This textbook is you being used today in several school districts in California. And this picture shows a garbage dump with a pig and a woman who's cleaning up the garbage. And this is the defining picture of Hinduism in that textbook. I haven't shown you all the pictures about Christianity and Islam, which are much better. But this picture creates enormous confusion amongst the Hindu children in California. In fact, uh, I have a cousin who lives in California. And when I said this to him, he went and checked his son's textbook. His son happened to be in sixth grade. And we both found this picture in his son's textbook right now. And imagine, 10 years ago, the California textbook issue got started. And the battle to change it started. And 10, 10, 11 years later, 10 years later, this picture is still there in the textbooks. So it's not easy to change them. Next. So why is it so hard? It's so hard. Keep clicking. It's so hard because you know the, the study of Hinduism, the intellectual study of Hinduism has next has fallen from our hands, has gone away, gotten away from our hands into the hands of the West, you know, Macaulay and Donegan, the two pictures on the slide. And next, we have gone from discourses, discussions, and debates within the Sampradayas to deconstruction, distortion, and, and sometimes outright denigration. We've gone from the insider's shraddha to the outsider's suspicion about Hinduism. And that's the defining feature of the way ac the academia handles Hinduism. Next. Now, one important thing we have to understand is the West studies Hinduism. So if you go to Harvard University, Harvard has a Harvard Business School. It has a Harvard School of Medicine, a Harvard Law School. But it also has a Harvard Divinity School right on the same campus, Harvard Divinity School. If you go to Yale, Yale has a Yale Divinity School. If you go to Princeton, Princeton has a Princeton Theological Seminary. If you go to Claremont in Los Angeles, it has a Claremont School of Theology, and on and on and on. There are theological schools, schools of divinity all over North America. If you go to Berkeley, UC Berkeley, in the UC Berkeley campus, there is an entity called the Graduate Theological Union, GTU. Next. So, Western secularism promotes the study of religion. It's very important. Unlike Indian secularism, which is anti-studying anti religion. Of course, with exceptions to the minorities. <laughs> In the American Academy of Religion, called AAR, which is the professional body, like your American Medical Association or your IEEE, which is a professional body for different professional groups. There's a body called the American Academy of Religion. It consists of scholars who study religion professionally. It has 11,000 PhDs in it. 11,000. One of the largest academic bodies in North America. In addition, the theological schools, the seminaries, the divinity schools, churn out about 8,500 doctors of theology, doctors of divinity, etc. Next. Now, India, Indians are largely unfamiliar with this. Okay, Indian investments in the academia, in an attempt to make a difference, have always chased the South Asian Studies Department. South Asian Studies Department is the wrong place. <laughs> now, Western study of religion takes two paths. The secular liberal, which is the mainstream universities, which enshrines what we call the lens of suspicion. It looks at the phenomena of religion suspiciously through anthropology, through sociology, through psychology, through geopolitics, and so on. But on the other hand, there is also the theological study in the seminaries and divinity schools where the study of religion is, you know, located in a very prestigious space. There are no schools of divinity, theological schools in India for the study of Hinduism or anywhere else in the world. See, India has missed this, this whole point. that There is a place for the study of religion in the Western secular framework. Next. These two paradigms of study, the secular liberal and the, the theological, represent a deep divide within the West, which has historical roots in it. Next. 
Now, when you approach Hinduism from the study from the outsider's perspective, which is secular, liberal, or theological, either way, it's very critical. So, what do they focus on? They focus on Aryan invasion, Brahminism, the caste system, untouchability, the Dalit problem, human rights violations, then you can throw in poverty and slums, as in slum dog millionaire, and then superstition, idol worship, intolerance, and blah, blah, blah. That is the template for the study of Hinduism. So this has been studied enormously for many, many, many years, for hundreds of years, for 200 years or so. What is not studied in the academia is Vedanta, yoga, meditation, spirituality, holistic health, Ayurveda, you know, plurality, sustainability, values, family values, harmony amongst you know, various religious communities. Those are not studied in the West. What is studied is on, only on the right side. So the insider's perspective, there is a practitioner's perspective, what we would study if we studied Hinduism is missing in the academia. Okay, it's a very significant problem. Next. So we need to create a transformation here. And this is a problem we sort of decided, chose to get a grip on. And uh, there's another foundation in, uh, in Los Angeles called Dharma Civilization Foundation. We are working together with this. Next. So what we have done is we want to constitute, we want to construct little by little, bit by bit, brick by brick, a methodological transformation, you know, from studying Hinduism through anthropology, sociology, psychology, etc., to studying it through theology, philosophy, spirituality, practice, ethics, application, and so on. This is a methodological transformation. Okay, that's what is needed to clean up this space. Next. So what are we doing about it? Well, we, uh, under the able guidance, the spiritual guidance of Swami Dhananda Saraswati, we encountered an organization called the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley. We engaged with them for nearly seven months. We found it to be a very, very important institution in North America. We did a tremendous amount of due diligence on this institution. Um, and we, you know, it has a very, a very good partnership with UC Berkeley. And we created a roadmap with them. We, we proposed a roadmap to the GTU, saying that we will create at the GTU a significant Hindu institution as part of its consortium. GTU has a Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Lutheran, Jesuit, Dominican, Unitarian seminaries as part of its consortium. It also has a Jewish school, a Buddhist school, uh, an Islamic school, and on and on. In 60 years of its existence, the one thing it never had was anything on Hinduism. Despite the fact that the Hindus are a very large population in the Bay Area. But it took Swamiji's, Swami Dhananda Saraswati's insight to get us into this institution. So we are there now. So this roadmap went up the hierarchy through the the president of GTU, to the board of trustees of GTU, to the council of presidents, which included 10 Christian presidents of 10 different denominations. They examined our 130 page proposal and voted nine to one to accept our proposal. <clears throat> Next. So we have a roadmap. We started classes in 2014. We have launched a master's degree in 2015, just a couple of months ago. The first few students have started enrolling in this master's degree. Most of them are American. In 2016, we will launch our research and PhD program. In 2017, we hope to start our Center for Dharma Studies within the GTU. In 2018, we want, want to launch a full-blown autonomous graduate school in Hindu Dharma Studies. We'll be the first accredited autonomous graduate school on Hindu studies in North America. This vision has been validated with Puja Swami Dharan Saraswati. He's fully behind it, even though he's very delicate in health at the moment. So we've been raising money for this. So next click. So we started small. We've, we are now in the 2015. We are raising money for this. We need more for next year and even more. But I have a very important news to report to you. Click. We're here today, but 
as we speak on august 22nd which is just about a week ago one couple in the bay area whose names i will not communicate today have pledged an endowment of 4.4 million dollars <laughs> to endow the center for dharma studies okay so this is the most significant pledge the the largest pledge made by a by a hindu in north america certainly for an educational cause but probably amongst all causes this is probably the largest pledge made for a hindu cause now you you will this information this news is going to unfold over the next few weeks to months okay once the agreements are signed there'll be a press release there's going to be t- television there'll be a lot of news so there's going to be a very important development in the hindu world okay so i wanted you to know about it that this is happening next so where we are headed our goal and this is blessed by swami dhanand saraswati is to establish a an adi shankara institute for the study of advaita vedanta and sanskrit at the gtu as an affiliate institution within the graduate school and place at the head of it the swami dhanand saraswati endowed chair for the study of hindu dharma this is an important commitment it's a 5 million dollar commitment i am committed to it <laughs> and we will make it happen thank you very much